Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at shaders. How exciting! Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. And uh, <laughs> can you find the shaders? All right, so we're featuring shaders right here on the front. You can press that, or if that's not there anymore, maybe uh, go to the Zim 016 up here. And there's shaders right here. And if we're on Zim 017 or beyond, you can look back to Zim 016, just like we can look back here and find the shaders. Or indeed, under examples, here's shaders right here. And that will bring up the shaders mini site, like that, where you can see various shaders. Ooh, nice. And here's another one. Mm. So we didn't make that. This was made by TD Hooper right here out on Shader Toy. So if you go hit the S there, you can see uh, it available on Shader Toy, for instance, here. And we hit the S. And there it is on Shader Toy. So what we've done in Zim is made it so that you can copy this code here from Shader Toy into Zim and then we can use those shaders. So note that the logo right here, the Z, has a shader in behind it. So you don't have to just show a whole shader. You can use a shader. It comes in as a bitmap, a dynamic bitmap, so a bitmap that is changing, much like we do video. And therefore, you can drag that around if you want. You can put it anywhere a bitmap would be. So we can use it for backdrops and things. That shader right there behind the Z is in here somewhere too. Oh, there it is right there. Oop. Okay. By Narkowitz. So what we're going to do is show you how to make uh, that. Okay, a gradient. We're going to do a simple gradient shader from scratch. There's two types of shaders a vertex shader, which says what what are the points doing? Basically, the points are triangles. So we're doing two-dimensional shaders. So we really have two triangles here to make a rectangle. And the vertex describes what's happening with those. And then there's a fragment shader, which tells the color of each of these pixels. It goes through each pixel and you can specify what color that is going to be. Okay, so let's drop back to some code then and take a look at what these shaders are like. Sound good? I'll pull this down here. And I work in 016 in my shaders folder here and make a new file called simple.html. Enter. <clears throat> and we'll go to the Zim site and grab the template. So that's available under code right here. And we copy the template. You'll need Zim 016 or beyond. And we can call this simple fragment shader, not a vertex shader. So in 2D, uh, we, we, Zim will give you by default a Vertex shader that makes a rectangle out of the width and height that we do. So down here, uh, let's see what this looks like. We'll open in browser. And currently we have the default template, which looks like that. We get rid of this and instead say, hey, let's make a new shader. Dot center. Then here's what we would have. There's a new shader. Like I said, that's a bitmap, and by default it will be constantly updating. So if you have a shader that doesn't change, there's no animation in it, then you can set the uh, dynamic to false. And then I think it's a dynamic parameter or whatever. Read that. that would go in here. And we can drag this. If it's a bitmap, it's just a Zim display object that, for instance, we can drag like so. Now we can drag this and it can be filled with wonderful things. 
right now it's saying it's black and it looks like it's probably about 500 by 500 by default there. So if you went uh, the width of the stage and the height of the stage there, I won't bother dragging it anymore, but you could, then you see this. Now the shader fills the stage and we can't drag it. So good for a background. Nice, huh? Next is what code we put in there. And we can code that, say, up here, const, um, let's see. So you could bring in the code remotely, but we'll probably do it right here. And that would be fragment is equal to. Um, if you use single lines, you have to put everything on a single line. That would be a little bit awkward. So we usually use the new JavaScript back tick like that, which allows us to do a multi-line string quite easily and put that in there. But if you wanted to, you could bring this in from an external file, and that can be handy because when you work in the external file, we can get the color syntaxing. Let me give you an example. Here's the shaders. There's one right there, spiral, G-L-S-L. It's a general sh shader language, and that looks like this. Oh my god. So should we go over all of this on our Zim Explorer? All right, they're not all like that. As a matter of fact, usually shaders are quite short, but that was that complicated 3D spiral that was happening. <clears throat> uh, and we brought in to VS Code a component here called GLSL Literal, which allows this to be color syntaxed properly. If you want to work in a remote one. Oh, we should see how we bring that in too. So that was the, for the spiral is right here and there we are bringing in the spiral after the ready in our template we say what what files we want to bring in so we're bringing in the spiral and then we can say give me a new shader width and height of that asset and add it to the stage and that makes a spiral so that's it all this stuff is the header and the footer for our, our sim 016 Okay, so you don't have to do that. That would make a shader on the stage. That's it, bringing it in from a remote file. All right, we're not doing that though. We're going to put our code right in here. I mentioned that there are two ways that we can uh, handle our fragment shader here. Uh, one is OpenGL. Uh, the other is also OpenGL, but it's a shader toy version of it. So let's do the just the basic right now, void main and there we go so it looks like that and we also say what our output is going to be so the output of a vertex shader or sorry the out output of a fragment shader is a color and we'll specify that up here by saying out is a vec4 so a color has four parts to it, red, green, blue, and alpha. So we'll output a vec4, and we will call the output frag color. Okay. Inside here, we say frag color is equal to a vec4, so four parts. It's not a new vec4. This is a language somewhat like C, I guess. And in here, we can say, hey, give me all red, no red, green, and no blue. And make it alpha of one, like so. Now that we've made our fragment code, this is our shader code right here. Now that we've made it, we can copy it and paste it right into here, like so. Okay, so we're now making a new shader of the shader code. And it should give us a big red rectangle back over here refresh oh that is red indeed okay <clears throat> so we can also get by default we have a thing called a gl underscore frag cord coordinate 
And basically what that will do is it will tell us the position that we're currently looking at, that the fragment is reporting. So there's a fragment, or sorry, that the vector, uh, that the, the other one, the um, uh, vertex is reporting. So there's a vertex shader that you'll get automatically with the shader, and you can code the vertex shader too and pass that in a bit later, but usually that's for 3D. So the 3D will tell where the vertices are, and those are just two, at the moment, by default, it's two triangles in here, one triangle and another triangle that make a rectangle of our width and height. And what we're gonna get is it's gonna tell us the, um, the width and the height and the depth, but we, we don't deal with depth, the width and the height as we're going along there. And that thing's called GL underscore frag chord. So say we're not going to go one, but rather, well, here, I'll just put it up here for now, gl underscore fragment coordinate. However, if we want a number between zero and one, then we would divide that by i resolution, like so. Resolution, like so, like so. So this is given to us to match the shader toy format. Shader toy has a bunch of inputs, maybe a half dozen to a dozen inputs, and we've matched them. There are these things called uniforms, and uniforms are we can pass in extra information to our shaders. They're sort of like parameters, but they call them uniforms. We have a Zim uniforms object below that helps us with that procedure but we're given, like I said, about 10 of them by default. The resolution is one of them. And uh, we have to watch that. There are these things called vectors. So the frag chord coordinates that we're getting actually have X, Y, and Z available. I think it's X, Y, and Z, or maybe it's even X, Y, Z, and W. Um, but anyway, if we ask for the X and Y, uh, let's just ask for the X for now. That would be the X component of the coordinates. And the resolution also has an X and a Y. So the resolution is a VEC2. So there's VEC2, VEC3, VEC4. And a VEC2 just means it has an X and a Y. So we'll go dot X. It's basically the width right there. So if we take the location of the pixel and divide it by how wide we have to go, when the pixel's at the left-hand side, it will be zero when the pixels at the right hand side, it will be the width, okay, or, or this value right here. And so you're gonna end up getting, and when it's in the middle, pixels in the middle, you'll get 0.5. So if we pass this information right here, group, into our red, you're going to see a gradient that goes basically from zero to one of red across here. Let me refresh here. There we have a zero going across to one. Okay, uh, let's check the Y out. So if we go Y and Y here, then we're getting the Y component and we'll see where zero is in the Y. Zero's at the bottom. So basically this is where it considers zero to one. So you have to watch that, that is uh, a little bit different than our normal 2D canvas, which has zero at the top. So if you want zero at the top, you would go one minus that. And let's see what we get. No. So F12 to see if we have an error. And oh, we do have an error. So when you're working with shaders, I would say that every time you save it and run it, you have about a 50% chance of having an error or getting it right. It's really tricky. So what is this one trying to say? Hmm, wrong operand types. No operation minus. Where do we have a minus? Hmm, there's a minus. So there's no operation minus exists that takes a left-hand operand of type const int. Oh, so we provided an integer there. And the right-hand side is not an integer, 
but rather is a high precision float. Okay, so you can't do that, which means we have to turn this into a float, which uh, that's all we have to do is put a decimal behind it, or if we wanted to, we could say decimal zero, but we need at least the decimal, and so that's what they often do. These ones don't matter, uh, I guess, but we could put decimals here as well because those were being passed into places where presumably floats could exist. And there we go. So now we've switched it so that the black is up at the top and comes down this way. But anyway, we don't really need to do that. However, that's good to know, huh? Wouldn't you say? Okay, and just to simplify this, we'll go back to these guys. So there you go. We have, uh, what if we did an X and a Y there? So here now we have two, an X and a Y value. There's, so that counts as two. So if we put this in here, it almost does the same thing as a spread. It will spread X and Y into this VEC4, which means we get an error. So if we refresh here, Uncaught area, error, too many arguments. So that's because we have two. We have X and Y from here, and we have one, two, three more from here. So get rid of one. Now it's going to spread this across the X, uh, well, across the red and the green, and then this is the blue. I don't want speech recognition. Don't want a key there. So we refresh here. Ooh, okay. Note that zero zeros down here and kind of coming up that way. And that's two coordinates. So you can also do things. For instance, I could pass in a VEC3 here. VEC3. Put round brackets. And then I would need three things in that. So now we have a VEC3 that is the two things from that plus the zero. Okay, that makes a VEC3, and we're passing that into a VEC4, and that means this is worth 3, and that's worth 1 to make 4. Okay, they call that something, I can't remember what they call it there, but something silly, like, it's not winding, but it's, uh, I don't know, anyway, <laughs> I have a special word for it. Okay, let's check out. Uh, well, first of all, let's resimplify that. We'll get rid of that. GL frag chord X and Y. Well, why don't we just do the X and bring back the zero, comma zero, comma one. So, do we have four things again? Oh, we have the X coming from here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four in the vec four. We'll do check. This should be our are red again. Yeah, there we go. Let's convert this. Instead of using the void main, we'll use what shader toy uses. So that would look like void uh, main image. Okay, main image. Uh, shader toy has multiple channels. So you could bring in a picture and some other others, any things and channels. But this is our main image one. They also have a like a main VR or something like that, or maybe it's I can't can't remember a VR format. So some of those things, once you get to multiple channels and VR based things, it won't come into Zim. But the most of the time, you can just copy from Shader Toy into Zim right into here, and it will work. Okay, and there's lots of examples. All of these examples, for instance, worked. I would say about 90% of them worked right off the bat. Okay, so let's see their format. Void main image. And what we do is we collect an out here. We, we're going to specify the out of a VEC4 right in here. VEC4. And we will call that frag color. And then we specify an in. And that will handle our GL frag cord. cord. And we're going to in a VEC2 uh, using X and Y in and call it, simplify it a bit, call it frag coordinate like that. Just watch, GL frag chord is a VEC4, I believe. All right, so X, Y, Z, and W. And if I remember correctly, 
And then here we're bringing in a vec2. Sometimes that can matter. All right, we put our squiggly brackets in here. And then we would do basically the same thing as this. That's our output, frag color. But our input, we could still use that if we wanted to, but we can also use the simplified frag coward like that. And we don't have these guys anymore. And we refresh here. We're currently getting, it uh, looks like an error with globalizer things and something is going on. I don't know what it is, but if we delete that, that shouldn't matter. So we'll look into that. Uh, let me just take a copy of this so I can look into it later. And this thing over in another window. Okay. So uh, if we delete that, um, then the error doesn't occur. Okay, so we're back to what we had before. Nice, huh? Void main image. And this matches the shader toy format of many of these things. So if we go in and take a look at the second spiral, for instance, void main image, it does a bunch of stuff. And there's the frag color getting exported based on the sign and time and all that. And there's our Zim shader. So all of this was directly copied from Shader Toy to make that. There's the URL for it, etc. And like I said, that's for most of those as well. Okay, what about this eye resolution and this these things called uniforms? So we can bring in our own uniforms. Let's uh, give it a go, and we can say const uniforms, and that will allow us to control what's in our shader, um, control what's in our shader based on Zim stuff, like a slider, for instance. So uniforms is a new uniforms, like that. So that's a Zim uniforms, and in here we put an object literal. And these are all the properties that we're going to want to pass in to our shader. How about green? The amount of green, and we can say Let's do green of one. We then put uniforms as the next parameter. So this passes the uniforms into our shader. And in here, we would declare it. Un uniforms, uh, uniform, what type of it? This one is a float. So it's just a single number float. And it is called green. All right, so that would match what you have here. Uh, there's a special, when we spa pass in a VEC4, uh, it'll, it also matches as well, but I have, there's a sort of a special system that we can use for that, and I'll show you that in a bit. Okay, great. Uh, in here, let's use it, though, so we won't bother doing the, let's copy this around, we'll get rid of that, and that will be zero for red, and then this is how much green we have right there. So there we are using it. Oh, let's comment that. Okay. Now let's have a look. This should be green. Uh, there's that 50% chance of getting it wrong. So are we still having a problem with keeping these things around? Shouldn't matter. No. So that's not uh, an issue there. It's something else. Frag color, VEC4 green. We've got a uniform that is a float green uniforms, lowercase uniforms, float green, semicolon. Okay, semicolon. I wonder if that other problem had anything to do with that. Some code in there without a semicolon. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Okay, obviously we should be able to comment out stuff and not have it break. So I'll, like I said, we'll look into that. Uniform float green with the semicolon on the end, and it's green, yay! What if we said 0 0.5, 0 0.5, is that half green? Yeah, it's a darker green, okay, so kind of less green. And if we said just 0 0.1 of green. Ooh, that's, that's quite dark too, so that's getting closer to zero. Uh, all right, so we'll bring that up to a full green, and let's see if we can make a slider, const 
slider is equal to a new slider. And we'll make this have, uh, well, it has a min of zero already, min of zero, so we don't really need to put that, but just so that we know that it has a min of zero, whatever, max of one. So we're going to make the slider go from zero to one. We will dot center it, and we'll set it so that when it changes, it calls this arrow function. Okay, or you could use the next line, slider dot on change, call this arrow function, but that's our short chainable way of doing it. We could also wire this to it. There we go, we got our slider there, and what we're gonna do is tell our uniforms right here, unif if forms dot green is equal to the slider dot current value, like so. Because our shader is automatically updating, even though it's not animating, so really I think it's something like, this is probably the, I think this is the vertex, so we pass in null, and then if we say false there, I believe that means don't automatically update. At which point we might have to say shader, we don't have a value for it, uh, const shader is equal to, we in here we might have to go shader dot update. All right, that would update the shader there. But uh, by default, it is already updating, which means our slider here, we would be okay. Just saying, hey, uniforms, green, we're updating our uniforms, which we passed in, uh, is the current value. Mm, we should probably start the, the, the current value here of one, because I think we're, see how we're starting with one here, or whatever the uniforms value is. Anyway, we, we don't have to, but it would be the best. Anyway, come over here, and you'll see what I mean. So there we have our slider, except the slider is at zero, basically, so that should really be black. So as soon as I move it here, oh, didn't work. Okay, so we're Shift refresh here. Let's try this again. Ah, there we go. Okay. So that is fine. Don't worry about it. It's just a glitch. So there it is starting at zero, and there's one. So if we wanted to say start at halfway there, then we could say 0.5 here. And here we would say current value. I guess we could do uniforms dot green. Okay, so whatever's in the uniforms at, at green, which is 0.5, will be our current value of the slider. And now our slider starts in the middle there. Okay, so we are now using Zim to control things inside of the shader. So that's quite a nice system. This is usually a pain in the neck to do, and the whole of the shader system has abstracted maybe know, 100 to 200 lines of code. It is complicated, complicated code, just so that we can make it this easy for you. So, yay. All right, um, let's see. Let's bring this down so you can kind of see all of that a little bit better. Whoops. Okay, is that good? Yay. Uh, there's another thing about the uniforms. For instance, we could pass in all of the colors by saying colors, colon, and here we could say zero comma, or how about one comma, zero comma, zero comma, one, like so. So that's like our VEC4. In other words, we're using an array here, and it will end up getting passed in as a VEC4. So uniform vec4 uh, colors, like so. At which point we could, if we wanted to, say frag color is equal to colors. And not use this one. So now these four will be sent into our uniforms come in as colors, and we're setting the frag color to these four. Let's have a look. Uh, the slider it would still 
No, it wouldn't change the green anymore. So the slider won't work anymore. There's red. Uh, slider doesn't work anymore though because we're not we don't have green being used so the so how could we make it work to say operate how much red or whatever we want to do we want to be able to easily animate and access these things so what we've done is we've said if you pass in an array which is like their vector and we we do we do that a lot we would be controlling the vectors inside of the shader quite a lot. So what we did is we said this now becomes colors underscore capital A, colors underscore capital B, colors underscore capital C. So we could fix that up by saying uniforms at colors underscore B. That would be, well, let's do the red. A is the current value. And so colors is here. And if we access the colors at A, it's going to change that value right there. Oh, we don't have it set at the right value, but anyway, there, there we are doing the red. That allows us, by setting up a system like this, check this out. So if we don't do anything with the slider, we'll comment out the slider. We can do something like uh, uniforms dot wiggle what property we want to wiggle colors underscore B what value do we want to start at maybe 0. 0.5 that's that's what it will wiggle about so it will ha wiggle about half uh, B color and then the minimum wiggle will be 0. 0.2 and the maximum wiggle will be 0. 0.4 in a minimum amount of time of 0.5 to 1. Okay, so what you're looking at there is the prop, the uh, base, the minimum amount of wiggle, the maximum amount of wiggle, and then the min time and the max time. There's other things too that you can add in there. But now we'll be wiggling the B color, which is the, oh, that's the green. Okay, well, let's see what it looks like when we wiggle that. Okay, we can, so cool, huh? There it is, wiggling the color. That's why that's handy. We can animate that as well. So we could animate it from one to the other. Let's wiggle the red though, that would be A. And here's what it looks like when we rig wiggle the red. You can kind of see what's happening better. It's going from a dark to a, a bright red. All right. Uh, I think that might be it for this Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and it's been a delight to have you here. Hopefully you... Uh, now have an idea about some of the things we can put in here and I think you're going to find that those are quite complicated when we look through. We'll do an ex another explore though on some of the complicated ones. Maybe go through and see how to bring over shader code from a shader toy into Zim. And we'll see that in an upcoming Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract. And once again, it's been wonderful to have you here. Come visit us at zimjs.com. Uh, I don't know if we have a, we have forum.zimjs.com. I guess you could do zimjs.com slash forum. Uh, we'll set that up right now. <laughs> and zimjs.com slash discord if you want to see us on discord. Ciao. Have a great day.